So while doing some work on my trusty four-wheel drive, I noticed this on the ground. And this. Upon further inspection, I found the coolant was leaking from my radiator. The radiator I had bought online from a radiator shop that is now permanently closed. I got it thinking a copper brass one would be the best choice and they're usually pretty good when they're not made cheaply with thin materials. I did have the radiator repaired at a radiator shop twice where I was informed that that particular brand was notorious for this kind of problem. So I decided to turn to eBay for another radiator and at about half the price of my last one I was filled with the confidence that only a budget eBay purchase can provide. How can I lose? Several days later. Cooling and radiator specialist, eh? Well, we'll just see about that. Let's have a look in here. Okay. Seems nicely wrapped up. All this foam here. At least it's straight. That's good. Better than the last one that I got. Yes, yeah, decent thickness. That's about. That's about 40. I don't know what is it? Uh, we've got here about 50. It says. That's about 50 mil, but there's a little bit of space here, so about probably 45 millimeters, around thereabouts. So. Yeah, it looks alright. I mean, I'm no alloy welder here, but you know, it's any better, but we'll, the proof will be in the pudding when I put coolant in there and fully pressurise it and then see how it goes. As far as the weight goes, it is... Can you see that? No, it's not working. There we go. 5.3.5 kilos. So we'll compare that to the old one that came out. And this one is, the light goes off there. Eight and a half kilo, so. The alloy radiator, although being a bit larger, weighs about three kilos less. That's not a huge number in the grand scheme of things, especially once you top it up with coolant. But if you're counting every gram you can, this might be something to keep in mind. Now let's get this thing fitted. One eternity later. So I've driven a thousand kilometers with it now. Did a little bit of off-road stuff in there as well, so it got shaken around a bit. Hasn't used up any coolant, which is fantastic. So unlike the other one that I had, which was leaking everywhere. The only downside that I can think of is uh, this sits a little bit high, so it does sort of rub against your bonnet there but I'm going to adjust these these bonnet stops here to give it a little bit of breathing room um, also it's the cap that comes with it is 19 psi which is a bit high for these so I got a, um, a replacement cap they sent me one out which was 16 psi which is uh, what they use in the Tritons but this motor came out of a Triton anyway so it's not going to be a problem uh, but other than that yeah I'm, I'm very happy with that so we'll see how it goes over the next year and I'll do a follow up about a year later. Um, that's just a little bit of oil I spilt that's not leaking anywhere. So yeah, happy days. So that concludes my unboxing of a budget eBay all alloy radiator. There's a couple of things I'd like to add. Upon receiving the radiator, I went around to a few aftermarket spare parts stores to find the correct pressure radiator cap that would fit. But I didn't have any luck. So keep that in mind and perhaps buy a spare cap just in case you need to replace it down the track. Thankfully the seller was kind enough to post me out a 16 psi cap at no extra cost. Could I have kept the 19 psi radiator cap without problems? Maybe. Did I want to risk it? No. As having too high a pressure can cause issues with the cooling system components. Not something you really want in an off-road vehicle. Also, I had to slightly modify the fan shroud so it would attach to the radiator, but it wasn't a big job. Finally, 
Although this radiator arrived in good condition and fitted with only minimal dramas, other folks have had some pretty big issues. Because they're mass produced to a price point, some will arrive dodgy. They might come buckled or with the mounting points or the water outlets in the wrong spot. So there is that little bit of a risk. So if you need your car back on the road fast, or you don't have a second vehicle, then it's probably best to spend a bit more and get a radiator from a bricks and mortar store so you can get back on the road quickly. Anyway, I hope this video has proven insightful and I'll keep you all up to date regarding any issues that arise with this radiator. But for now, it's all good. So happy four wheel driving and thanks for watching.